Welcome back. First, let's start with a quick recap. In the previous videos, we have created the key pill. Uh, then we have compressed the public key and we hashed it in order to get the key hash. We then moved to generate both the native SegWit script as well as the backward compatible nested script. And in this video, we will finally take those objects that we have created earlier and we will use proper encoding to transform them into proper Bitcoin SegWit addresses. Now, it is important to remember that there are two types of encoding. The old encoding, which is base 58, this is the one older clients are familiar with and therefore it is the one that is used to encode our backward compatible nested pay to script hash uh, type of addresses. While the second one is known as batch 32. This is a new type of encoding that was introduced about two years ago. And this batch 32 encoding is used to encode native SegWit addresses. As we can also see, the different encoding creates two distinctive addresses. Each address uses different character sets and different structure, which makes them visibly different from one another. So how does each encoding enforce a different address structure? Well, over here, we can see what information is encoded in each address. This slide is for the base 58, and we can see that there are three major parts in this uh, structure. The first byte give two pieces of information, what blockchain we are using and what type of script we expect the sender to place in the transaction. In our example, we want a pay to script hash type of script on the mainnet. So we look at the table and we can see over here that the byte that we need to place is 05. The second part is the unique information that the senders need in order to complete their script. This information is either the script hash or the key hash. In our case, because it is a nested pay to script hash type of transaction, the unique information is a script hash. The third part is the checksum. The checksum makes it possible to identify issues or typos with our address. The third part is something that we need to calculate by ourselves. It is basically the first four byte of a double SHA-256 of the first two parts. We will see it in the code in a second and hopefully it will be easier for you to um, get a sense of it. Okay, so let's create the checksum. And the checksum, as I said earlier, in order to get it, we need to start with the flagged script hash. The script hash plus the network and script type uh, flag. So we're going to create the flagged script hash, byte from hexadecimal. The first byte, the network byte, is 0, 05. It also denotes the fact that we are going to use the script hash. So this is over here. And now the checksum is the result of the SHA-256. And don't forget the digest method. You're going to do this for the SHA-256. Again, don't forget to digest the result of the flagged script hash. And of course, we only need the first four byte. Okay, so now we need to append our checksum to our flagged script hash. 
and this will basically be the binary address that means the address without the encoding so the binary address is the flagged script hash plus the checksum this is the address in its uh, binary form we are going to import the package base 58 and this package will basically allow us to change the binary form into the base 58 form and we are going to use this package in order to create our nested address so the nested address equals to base 58 the method is b58 encode and we are going to give it the binary address and now let's try to print it out let's see the result so I'm going to try and print out the private key so private private key private key in its hexadecimal form now I'm going to try and print the nested address so nested address nested address and we need to use the method the code because it's in base 58 uh, object right now so there we have it let's organize it okay so we got our nested our backward compatible segwit address and now we can actually provide this address to a third party and expect it to know how to use it even if they are using older bitcoin client just pay attention before you are actually giving this type of addresses to someone else that the private key was randomly generated so unless you're going to keep this private key stored somewhere basically you will never be able to recreate this address or to claim coins that were sent to that address so be very careful with that okay so that is it for the nested segwit address part and now it is time to take a look at the batch 32 the native segwit address so now it is time for us to move forward and to get our native segwit address with the help of the batch 32 encoding okay so just as we did with base 58 let's examine the structure of our batch 32 addresses the first part in this address is some sort of a flag that conveys information about the type of network that we are using pay attention this um, flag only convey information about the network type whether we are using the main network the main chain the test chain a litecoin or something completely different it doesn't say anything about the script unlike the base 58 in which we add a table a two-dimensional table for both the network type and the desired type of script the second part is the separator this is basically the digit one and it is used to separate the human readable part from the rest of the address the third part is the script type what type of script we want to use this time we wish the coins to be sent using a pay to witnesses public key hash version zero type of script so we will specify the desired script as zero which basically stands for version zero of the pay to witness public key hash um, version zero script yeah it's a long sentence the first part is the unique information either the script hash or the key hash this time we are using the native segwit pay to witness public key hash version zero script so the missing piece of information is the key hash itself because we are paying to key hash so we're going to use the key hash and not the script hash last we have the checksum the checksum is six characters long and in this case we don't need to pre-calculate it separately 
The checksum in the case of batch 32, it's actually quite neat the way it is being produced. But this is beyond the scope of this tutorial. So I will just leave a link to it in the description below so you can read more about it. But it is suffice to say that we can start our conversion even if we don't yet have the checksum as a separated variable. And we'll see it in a second in the code itself. Okay, so back to our code. And the first thing that we need to do is to find a proper base32 converter. Unfortunately, batch32 is still relatively new. And there isn't any package that I can actually recommend to do this conversion. However, there is the SIPA or Peter Whaley um, Python reference of the batch32 package. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And we are just going to take this reference implementation as is. We are going to pretend as if this is the package that we are going to use. It should be enough just to get the hang of it. After all, we are only here to understand the architectural step behind creating those um, type of addresses and not the encoding process. So let's take this code and let's paste it into our code. And now we are going to create a basic method in order to get our batch32, our native SegWit address. And that's going to be encode. And it expects three parameters. The first one is the human readable part, which is BC for the Bitcoin um, main network, main chain. The second part is the script version. In our case, it's the pay to witness public key hash version zero. So we're just going to place zero. And last is the unique information, which is in this case, the key hash itself. So there we have it. And I'm going to try to print it out. The native address. And there we have it. Now we got both the nested and the native SegWit addresses. We got our private keys. And yeah, that's it. We can try and use those addresses. Just remember, of course, that the private key will continue to change all the time because it is a random number. So write it down. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed.